How cute. Not. So cliche to be a baby hater. Then call me a cliche. Go and stand the ankle biters. I always think there's something very odd about people who love animals but hate children. <laughs> if you can tear yourself away from playing daddies, I'd like you to read a letter from the insurers about the money for the Oakwell stud. I want to get him off to sleep. <sighs> See you back at home, farm. <laughs> Steve, we've had vandals. Someone's gone and Shh. chucked out. Oh, chairs and benches in Aldi Village Swimming Pub. Well, you better hold them out then, aren't you? Oh, come on, mate. There's only me, and that garden furniture's heavy, you know. Morning, Steve. Roy, I'll get straight to the point. Have you got any labouring jobs? No, nah, if we need to start, we advertise. I could use a hand right now. I've been run off my feet since Biss left. All right, which of the Dingle clan are you trying to foist on me? Butch. Butch? No offence, Lisa, but I don't think Zoe and Sophie would be too happy about him working up there. Well, he's got a girlfriend now in Australia. He's right smitten. He'll keep out of the way. I don't know. Well, I know he's not exactly mastermind material, but he's a real grafter. You should see the way he cares for his pigs when he's mucking them out. We don't keep pigs. The point is this, that when Butch puts his mind to something, he's right assiduous. Look, I suppose I could show him ropes. All right, I'll give him a fortnight's trial. If he shapes up, I'll keep him on, all right? Thanks, Steve. Uh, Butch will be thrilled. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, the trail ends. What trailer here, you ask? A trailer paint doing about 30 yards to the stables. Oh, no. Tell Rembrandt to get it cleared up. Well, it's only a motion, Steve. It's going to work. You can look after James for a couple of hours this afternoon. Can't Sophie, you? I'm busy this afternoon. I've got business meetings. Oh, I've got to go to the clinic with Zoe. Well, she doesn't need you there, does she? She does. We'll, we'll take James along. It's about babies, isn't it? Mm. All you can do is give me proper notice. I can't. I'm sorry. And what am I supposed to do? How am I going to cope? I'm sure if you call Kim, she'll be able to cut short her trip to New Zealand. Well, just because you've let her down? Then I'll give you some numbers for some nanny agencies. You owe us a lot more than that. Kim's been good to you. He can't expect us to turn our whole lives upside down just because of your private life. Steve, that's what nannies do every day. I have lost count of the number of evenings I've cancelled because the boss has changed her mind. That's part of the job. Then just this once, I'm going to put myself first. You may not think I'm someone important like you or Kim, but that doesn't mean I can't be hurt, and I need some time and I need some space to get over this. Well, if that's the way you feel, you better leave now. I just have to say goodbye to James. Forget it, you just lost the right. I understand, this is an emergency. Well, if that's your attitude, I'll try someone else. You wanted to see me? Yeah, I need you to take care of James for a few hours. Well, that's Sophie's job. Well, Sophie doesn't work here anymore. Well, I've got the filing to do. Just at the moment, this is more important. I'm not a nanny. Kelly, stop arguing. I'm your boss, just as you're told, all right? Hey. It'll cost you. You're already being paid. Well, what are the extras? Sweets, treats, taxis. That should cover everything. Come on, James. Walkies. Oh. Everything's fine here, Kim. James, he's as happy as ever. Out with Sophie at the moment. I miss you too. I'll see you when we get back, darling. Bye bye. Why didn't you tell her? I don't want to worry you. He's her son, her responsibility. It'll be mine too when we're married. I don't know why you find parenthood such an exciting prospect. I could think of much better things to do. Like seeing those stallions I lined up. Yeah, I've well, got to find a new nanny first. Thanks to you. What? Where's Sophie? She's gone. Gone where? I brought her things. Well, she didn't leave a forwarding address. He might as well bin it all. Your lover's tip has caused Steve no end of problems. It's not been a lot of fun for me either. Strange people. I gather you found a nanny or you wouldn't be here now. I've agreed on a week's trial. You're going to see how she works out? No, she's going to see how I work out. The last boss gave her a car, satellite television, and three weeks in the Bahamas. Find another one. I interviewed a dozen. She seemed about the best. Are you sure it wouldn't be easier to phone Kim? Well, I've told you, I'm going to show Kim I can cope on my own. Well, as long as you know what you're doing, I think she'll be furious when she finds out. This must be an experience for you, mixing with the plebs. Well, we just say this was a working lunch. I'm not happy with the condition of the staff at home farm. And why? Aren't they kneeling in your presence? <laughs> They're just sloppy, insolent, ignorant and badly trained. If you mean Kelly Windsor, she's not representative. 
Anyway, she was hired by Chris. Presumably not for her typing skills. I think even Kelly's worked in more offices than you have. It bothers you, doesn't it? The fact that I've got money. No, just the fact you've done nothing to earn it. Don't worry, Steve. When the revolution comes, you can put me against the wall and shoot me. To leave, drink. or should I call the police? There's no need. He's going. Next time you've got a score to settle, do it in your own time, not ours. How is it you describe the staff here? Pleasant and efficient, is that what you said? Day to find the stud book. The staff go round doing anything but the work they're paid to do. And the business is in a mess. Well, thank you for that constructive overview. You spent more time in the last few weeks playing with James than working. James needed someone looking after him. Now that's sorted, I can concentrate on the stud venture. Not before time. Kim's not going to be happy if she gets back from New Zealand and finds you've bankrupted her. Uh, that's not going to happen because, unlike you, I know about business and the stud farm's a business like any other. No, it's not. It really helps to know about horses, and I do. I know far more than you, which wouldn't be difficult. What can I say? Mummy and Daddy never bought me a pony of my own. Of course you know about horses. It's your hobby. It's something to keep you interested. But I bet you never have to worry about where the money came from. So what do you know about business? Don't be so naive. You think having a title means I don't have to understand money? My family's had to struggle to survive. Don't tell me you're down to your last million. That's terrible. Look, Steve, we're partners. It would help if you could look past all that inherited wealth and credit me with a bit of intelligence. And what happened to the last person you went into partnership with? If you mean Alex, we all make mistakes. Alex was a waste of space. Do me a favour, just don't judge me by him. Or else? You could be in for a shock. Oh, sorry, wrong door. I thought this was a working office, not play school. Good morning, Steve. How are things going, Steve? I see how things are going. You're playing at being a dad while your staff do anything but work. Like who? Like that Glover boy for a start. He was very rude. Uh, that's just Roy. Sometimes you've got to make allowances. I don't have to. Anyway, he's a good worker. But I agree, we've all got to justify our existence. I suppose you mean me? I mean all of us. Thanks to your husband's recklessness, we've got a lot to talk about. I know. Why don't we do it over lunch at the races? What races? The next meeting at Skipdale. I don't believe you. One minute you're criticising the staff, the next you're swanning off to the races. It's work. It'll be hard work justifying it. Horses are our business. I'm the only one round here who seems to understand them. In business terms, they're simply units. Even the form can be reduced to a simple equation. Really? Of course. Let's put it to the test. You and I will go to the meeting and each make bets of a thousand pounds. Scared? No, I enjoy the chance of a flutter. We'll do it then. It's no contest. <laughs> we'll clear off. We'll get the runners and riders on the net, and I don't want you pinching my toes. Feel free. Good. Dingle free zone. How's James? He's terrific. Oh, Steve's surrogate daddy activities are reducing by the day. That's not true. He's great at playing. It's the unpleasant things he's not so hot on. Mm. Well, you know where I am if you need reinforcements. Oh, you're broody, aren't you? He's my brother. So you know a bit about horses, don't you? A bit? She's a vet. Could you pick a winner? You can't ask her. What's going on? Steve and I are having a contest. Who can pick the most winners? I use my nouse. He thinks you can do it by pushing buttons on his computer. Of course you can. It's simply a matter of considering all the variables, and that's what computers do. So why do you have to ask Zoe? There might be factors I haven't thought of. Tough. Well, don't worry, Steve. I haven't picked a winner in my life. <laughs> You're still talking about horses. Tara. You've obviously been taking lessons from Kim. You see lots of horses. What's Look. going on? Uh, change of plan. James is coming with us. Oh, not a good idea. I thought I'd mentioned I don't do, Mother. Well, it's not a problem. I can look after him. That's what you pay a nanny for. Uh, not anymore. A week's trial finished yesterday. You've sacked her? Got a better offer from some Arab diplomat. Own room, own car and six weeks' holiday in the sun. I can't compete with that. Well, then you'd better book someone else. I already have them, but she can't start till tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, it's down to me. Well, what about your staff? You could get Kelly to look after him. She's done it before. I can't keep passing him on to strangers, Tara. I told Kim I want to be a father to him. It's about time I started proving that I can be. Oh, maybe we should just cancel our day at the races. <laughs> Rubbish. We'll have a great day together, won't we? Hey. Eh? Hi. 
Hi, fellas. Hello. Nice to find someone who isn't going to accuse me of being Mother of the Year. Tara's embarrassed because we had to bring James along. Perhaps a little chap will bring you luck. <laughs> Racing isn't about luck, it's in the blood. Got any tips for us? Sorry. Top secret. Tara takes it all very seriously. We've got a little wager on the side. A thousand pounds to the one who comes out on top over the day. You know, I'm 50 quid up already and she hasn't even had a bet yet. When I do, it'll wipe you out. Ah. Looks as if Steve's had another winner. What's his system? Nothing very clever. He just sticks to the favourites. He's been lucky so far. Yeah, 150 pounds up on the day, lucky. What about you, Lady Oakley? Oh, I still haven't placed a bet. It all goes on the next race. Bit risky, isn't it? All or nothing. That's how I like to play. You should try it yourself if you're going into business. It's all about keeping your nerve. And having a good tipster. <laughs> so which nag will be carrying the Oakley fortune on his back, then? Well, that would be telling. I might just look over your shoulder when you're placing your bet. I think you'll be otherwise engaged. If you don't change James soon, his nappy's going to run in the next race. Oh, well, we're off home now, Steve. Poor Robert Wiser. Yeah, join the club. At least I know investing in business is a wiser bet. <laughs> Where's Tara? Gone to collect her winnings from the three o'clock. A 25 to one. Sure. Lucky lady. <laughs> Don't rub it in. She's so pleased with herself, she's even taken James along to buy him some sweets. Not your day, is it? No, to cap it all, I've just been blocked in. But I'm going to see the car park attendant, see if he can get us out. Well, we'll see you at Emmerdale. All right, then, I'll see you later. Excuse me. Trevor. Oh, what are you doing here? Look, James says Uncle Steve. Got to try and cheer him up a bit. I think he's rather a sore loser. <laughs> Hi, Steve. I've decided to take us all out to dinner on my winnings. No, I'll sort the car out myself, all right. Aren't you going to introduce us? Trevor? Come on, Tara, we're going. Are you going to tell me what that was all about? It's just some drunk who thought it was somebody else. You're not a very good liar. He knew you, Steve, or is it Trevor? I don't want to talk about it, OK? I never realised you were such a snob. I hope it wasn't on my account. I'm not shocked that some smelly old car park attendant treats you like a bosom buddy. Just intrigued. And that's how you're going to stay. I know you're used to getting your own way, Tara, but the subject's closed. Oh, come on, Steve. I mean it, Tara. Either forget it or get out. For God's sake, Kelly, can't you do that quietly? Morning. I could put cotton wool around the edges, but I didn't realise we are in a library. We're not. We're at work. Where I expect some respect are not bad-mouthing and pouting lips. I'll not say another word, Mr Marchant, sir. Good. Uh, Kelly, but I'd be grateful for a cup of tea. Tea go now, am I? You're whatever I tell you to be. Too much cheese interrupts sleep. Makes you grouchy in the morning. Instant girls make me grouchy. Ooh, does that include me, too? Tara, I'm not in the mood. So what do you want? I don't know, Trevor. What could I want? Except perhaps to know who you are. Leave it alone. Why did that old man call you Trevor? He must have thought I was someone else. Oh, he knew who you were. The trouble is I don't think anybody else does. What awful thing did you do in your past? What makes you think I did something? To make you change your name. Maybe something was done to me. We all have things we're ashamed of. It's what makes the past so interesting. When I was young, I had to spend some time with the Spanish nobility. Mother was ill. It was a, a very confusing time. But their son was quite the little devil. The things we got up to that summer, well, it was an awakening. A sexual awakening. That's all you can dredge up to be ashamed of. You have no idea what shame is, how it can weigh you down. Yes, if you let it. <laughs> Only someone who had life given to them on a silver platter could say that. Sometimes you have to... Things aren't right and you have to change them. What things? You wouldn't understand. Make me understand, Trevor. Stop calling me that. My name's Steve March and I'm a successful... But what were you? for two. Cosy. Get your coat. Why? Not you! Tara. 
You want to know? Fine. I'll show you. Feeling uncomfortable? No. I am. Come on. This is where I was brought up. Now do you understand why I like to keep some things to myself? Not oh, really. Who is it? It's me, Trevor. Now then, stranger. Oh, hello again, love. Hello. Tara, this is my dad. Relax, sit down. All right. He brought me here, remember? I've put the kettle on. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have got some biscuits. Do you want me to get some? You've only just got here. I'm watching my figure anyway. You're not the only one. Dad, Tara's a lady. I can see that. He's always telling me to watch my P's and Q's. Tell him to bog off. <laughs> well, I would, but uh, he might just do that. Again. Well, this is all a bit strange. Steve, Trevor hasn't told me much about you. Oh, I'm not surprised. He's always played his guards close. And there's not much to tell. We fostered him when he was 11. Is this your wife? Huh? Janie, <laughs> yes. We'd fostered a lot before, Trev, but uh, he turned out to be a long-term lad. Seemed we were the only ones he wouldn't run away from. Can't lose a look at that picture looking right Prep. Aye, it's a good week, that, Blackpool. And we didn't get many holidays. And your mum looked beautiful. Mm. I'll get some biscuits. Do we get about them? Shop's just round the corner. Yeah. If you want to go, go. But I don't need biscuits or anything else. Got some. Ah, I'll put the kettle on. Hey, you see? Always bringing me stuff I don't need. What are you doing? We won the school championships that year. I scored in the final. <laughs> Dad screamed himself always, cheering me on. He still chews you on, just not as loudly. And you've ignored him since we arrived. Leave it alone. Why did you bring me here? You want to know why I changed my name, buried my past. Yeah, and I still don't have a clue. Except you've got the biggest chip on your shoulder I've ever seen. I lost and made more money last year than all the people in the street can ever earn. The suits I wear would pay their rent for a year. They're very wonderful for you. This has nothing to do with me anymore. You can't just tip exit out, pretend it didn't happen. It's what's made you what you are. I made me what I am, nobody else. Well, then you've only got yourself to blame because you are a terrible snob. If you'd only bothered to learn something from your father. He's a kind, generous man, more of a success than you'll ever be. I thought you'd understand. Oh, I do. I understand perfectly. I thought you had a problem with my class, but you don't. You have a problem with yours. I'm very sad. Lovely motor, lad. Thanks. Perhaps I'll have a spin in it next time you come. Yeah, sure. Mm. It's been lovely. Mm. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Ben. <laughs> Drive careful. Home. Yeah. Right. This is an official warning for being late. Any repeat, you'll be dismissed. Understood? I was having a driving lesson. Be useful to everyone if I could drive. What would be useful to everyone, Kelly, is if you did your job. Don't suppose you'd like to give me driving lessons? Be funny in your car. Kelly, I'm not Chris. It takes a lot more than flirting to get round me. I bet you're missing Kim, though. I mean, Biff only went away yesterday and... I'm getting lonely already. Kelly, I'm sure if you turn up on time, do whatever it is that Chris employs you to do, we'll get on well enough, OK? Well, if you change your mind. I don't think so. What's 
What on earth was she offering? I dread to think. Frightened Kim would find out. There's nothing to find out. And anyway, you're very good at keeping secrets. Are you? Oh, I think so. Particularly when they mean so much to somebody else. What can I do for you, Tara? If there's one thing I hate more than grumpy men, it's grumpy men who don't pay their debts. What? I've been waiting ever since our day at the races for you to settle our little wager. Right, yeah, I forgot. Uh, how much was it? Oh, a thousand, wasn't it? Oh, on top of what you won on the nags, it was a pretty successful day all round, wasn't it? Yes. And to show my gratitude and to gloat a little too, I thought I might take you to dinner. I'll be sure to order dessert. <laughs> Are you signing that, Steve or Trevor? I think I will miss about Mr. Tate. That twenty pound bonus in his wages at Christmas. This new lot will never think on it. Twenty quid, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Well, I was thinking of making it fifty pounds this year, but well, I wouldn't want to dishonour Frank's memory, so we'll leave it at twenty, shall we? Oh, thoughtful. Absolutely. I mean, a gesture like that is worth far more than mere money, is it? Frank would be delighted to know that you're looking after his old mates. Two glasses of white, please, Alan, and another one for Seth. Pity the Christmas spirit isn't manifesting itself more widely. Don't you think so? It's such a magical time of year. Everyone's so much nicer all of a sudden. Family reunions, for instance. Well, you obviously bring out the best in people. I've been trying to raise money to make the village a bit brighter this year. You know, what with the year we've had, losing friends and so on, but... I think it's only fitting that Emmerdale should should look better than ever. But everyone agrees, but nobody's prepared to pay. You've got lights. No. How about a tree? No tree. That would mean more lights. You're leaving it quite late, aren't you? Well, whatever it takes, Alan, uh, I'll be prepared to pay. Is this home farm's estate's money you're splashing around? Actually, no, it's mine. But in that case, let me contribute a little. I did have rather a good day at the races, after all. Oh, I think in, in that case... This round's on me. Did you book the nanny for tonight? No, until 9.30. I'll cook you a meal at my place. Then I'll get sorted with Kim coming back tomorrow. Oh, am I allowed to be on the welcoming committee? Mmm, she'd love that. Two gin and tonics, please, Terry. wonder if I could have a chat with you about a business idea. Oh, dear, the cut and thrust of the wool pack. I'd better sit down. Can you make it quick? Well, it's only the bare bones at the moment. I want to start a centre for executive outdoor training. A what? You know, management training, team building, survival stuff. Oh, that's for Wallies. I should know, done it. Rich Wallies. I'd have thought their money would interest you as much as anybody's. No, oh, and that's it. Well, I did say. It's... Yeah, bare bones. I heard you. Uh, look, Tony, come back to me when you fleshed it out a bit, yeah. Now, if you don't mind. Going to miss our little chats. We're only going to be spending this much time together when Kim gets back, are we? Well, I don't think she'll be over the moon about it now. <laughs> oh well. I suppose I'd better take up patchwork or something. Come on, you can't be that stuck for friends. <laughs> Do you miss Alex? Hmm. Alex was like a pal, a brother and a husband all rolled into one. Of course, I miss him. I hate him, but I miss him. Oh, he's in the past now, anyway. Yeah, but the past has a habit of rearing its ugly head. <laughs> you should know. Come on, I'll drop you off on the way to home farm. Oh, just let me come in for five minutes, Fred, and I can. I'll get a taxi home. One last laugh at the decor before Kim gets back. Hmm. Actually, I want to give James a good night kiss, but if I manage to get a giggle in the process. <laughs> Listen, about what's happened between us while Kim's been away. Steve, what did you do? Oh, stop joking, Tara. I'm talking about when we went to see John. You mean your dad? All right, my dad. It's just that... Look, I am glad I've been able to talk about the past and you've been a great listener, but I... You don't want it broadcast. OK, I get it. It'll be our little secret. Are you OK with that? Mm, actually, I quite like it. What? The fact that I know your history and Kim doesn't. She hasn't a clue, has she, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> 